opportunity to have this uh, you know, interview on behalf of the entire textile industry. I am Selvaraj, uh, Secretary General uh, Saima. LMW is the pioneer in building self-reliant for spinning machinery in India. I am sure there is an interesting story behind how the founder chose the, uh, this particular business. Can you please just uh, enlighten us? Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you and uh, it's a pleasure having a discussion with you. Um, to start the story of LMW, you will have to trace the roots of the family which goes back to about 125 years ago where um, we started uh, uh, basically uh, in agriculture, growing cotton because Coimbatore has uh, ideal soil and climate for cotton. Then the family went into ginning of that cotton and selling the bales and the idea came as to why don't we then add value and the first mill, Lakshmi Mills was first uh, established which is still uh, producing high quality yarn even to this day. Once uh, the mill was established, uh, my late grandfather, uh, Dr. G. K. Devarajulu, saw a gap uh, uh, and also an opportunity in terms of the equipment. And therefore, in 1966, we began uh, Lakshmi Machine Works to make the entire range of spinning equipment. The first machine which we rolled out was actually a speed frame in 1966. Uh, and thereafter, we slowly brought in all the machinery and as you said, we have the whole range of machines uh, uh, up till ring spinning and now also winding which has become a part of uh, spinning. Uh, we understood from day one that there's a, it's a continuous process and right from raw material till yarn, uh, the idea was to provide the customer in the Indian first, the Indian customer, a complete uh, package or a complete set of machines. And therefore, from day one, the intention was to provide the whole range of machines. Uh, when you speak about, uh, about quality or innovation, uh, you know, LMW stands uh, in the forefront, uh, especially cost effective. Uh, you know, it may be available at a higher cost, but uh, LMW has been very innovative and uh, uh, top in quality uh, without compromising on quality. Uh, so from a humble beginning, now today you have come to this uh, level, sir. And we would uh, be very happy to hear all about the journey so far. Uh, well, this journey uh, spans over several decades. Um, as we know, we are ourselves spinners. So we know that spinning industry, the textile industry has cycles. Certain cycles in the past were predictable. But now the cycles uh, become unpredictable because of the global, uh, shall I say, interlinking of uh, our business uh, and also to do with nature, uh, where the raw material comes from and other, other policies, uh, including, uh, as we see right now, issues which come up from uh, logistics and whatnot. Um, the business, as we know, is very capital intensive. It is also very... Uh, uh, operational, you need a lot of working capital also. The idea of innovation comes uh, simply because every time there's a challenge to our customer, uh, whether it is energy, whether it's speed, whether it's quality, whether it is production, what not, uh, we try and uh, keep ahead of the problems which the customer uh, uh, faces, our customers being the spinning industry. And that's how we have always had a, a uh, strong uh, R&D uh, DNA in the company and uh, we've been able to uh, provide, as I say, right from the blow room till the last machine, uh, which is uh, uh, up to date in technology and which satisfies and anticipates all the customer's uh, needs. How you have been able to manage this, uh, you know, all these recession and business cycle and still sustain your uh, quality and when it comes, never you compromise on quality or innovation uh, in spite of so many ups and downs, sir. I think it's a, it's a mix of many things. First of all, it's the business focus. Um, once you lose focus, especially in our textile business, uh, which is very uh, easy to do, there are a lot of opportunities, but we have stuck to the so-called spinning, 
uh, business from day one. That's one very important aspect. The second aspect, it's a very uh, conservative and very prudently managed uh, business where we plow back all the uh, profits back into the organization. And I think uh, systematically, whether it's a good year, bad year, we've had the discipline to plow back into the organization and keep the company on track. So it's a combination of a lot of policies as well as the vision of the company to, to stay uh, and keep our head uh, above the water. You are the single largest uh, uh, spinning machinery manufacturer, uh, you know, I would say even in the whole world uh, in terms of uh, capacity and other things. Uh, but uh, you have been very consistent in your pricing and delivery schedule. How you are able to maintain this and how you have been uh, giving so much of importance for the MSMEs? It's a long question, but uh, <laughs> let me try and answer it the best we can. Um, in terms of the pricing policy, I think it has always been about transparency. Today people talk about transparency in various types of aspects of business, but I think the greatest comfort to the customer is to know uh, as that what is the, 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 the price he is paying uh, for the product and he knows that that's the price uh, which others also are paying. So I think that gives him a great comfort and get great confidence in the, in the product itself. In terms of um, the answering for the SMEs, especially in the textile spinning business, uh, we were there at one time in life. So I think that's very important to support uh, the SMEs uh, uh, of in, in, in any type, including uh, where we source uh, our products from, our subcontractors, and right to the customers. So uh, there has always been a focus also for the young budding entrepreneurs because they would then tomorrow become uh, medium and then larger also. Uh, sir, innovation is LMW's hallmark and it is not easy to keep innovating to stay ahead of the market. Kindly let us know how you have built this culture of innovation at LMW, sir. I think it's uh, basically it's about having a good team. Uh, the team uh, then uh, has a good connect with the customer is able to understand his problems today and we are able to also see what can come tomorrow and then create those kind of products and services for them. Today it's not only about products, it's also about uh, services. Especially going into the whole industry 4.0, um, it's both uh, the service support is as important as the product support. You realized that the spinning sector, they need quality spares. How you are able to supply your stores and spares also with the higher quality without compromising on uh, quality aspect at a very cost effective uh, price, sir? Today our customers have choices. Uh, they have choices uh, of other brands and we thank them for choosing us as one of their premium suppliers. LMW has always believed that is not only the first point of contact of sale of the product, it's a whole life cycle management. So when you look after the life cycle of the products, which are anywhere between 10 years, 15 years or more, uh, it's the whole cost of the life cycle of the product. And therefore, there also we brought in a very clear policy in, in supporting the, the customers with products with also uh, spare parts and also enhancement kits. We have uh, performance enhancement kits, which we call PEC. Uh, wherever we see extensions of products, we offer that to the customers also in terms for them not to go out and buy a new CapEx again, where they can with marginal investment can get substantial increase in production or quality or also energy. Uh, I'm astonished to see even 30 years old LMW machine or even 40 years old LMW machines are working very good today, giving very good quality. Even them, uh, you are supporting by all your, uh, with your uh, high quality spares and accessories. You know, how you design your machines, you know, when you design for the number of years or something like that, how these machines, unlike other 
make and models how LMW machine is able to work for so many years, sir? I think this is a question much debated uh, in business circles and also government circles. The way we build a machine uh, uh, is one thing, but I think the machines working, the credit goes to the mill owners. They are able to take care of them very well and they are able to get the desired output. Um, when you talk about a certain vintage of machines, you might see some of our cards, 20 year old cards, 25 year old cards still running, yes. even in top class mills, yes. producing very, very high quality uh, fine counts of yarn. So it depends on the customer and what he sees the application of the products. And uh, therefore, uh, you know, uh, I, we enjoy the business. Every customer has his own view on uh, how old and what the technology he wants. And there's a place for uh, every kind of product, uh, both in our country as well as for export. What made LMW to, you know, motivate mills to go for uh, higher speeds in India, in fact, which has made us uh, highly cost competitive? It's every country is different. They have different challenges and they have different uh, needs to satisfy that. So when we see something, uh, a global uh, benchmark, we try and bring it back to our own customers to say, listen, this is the quality, this is the speeds, these are the feeds, and why don't we try that here also? So by doing that, as you rightly said, uh, there are enough studies to say that the Indian spinner is perhaps one of the most uh, competent and efficient uh, in the world uh, today. So therefore, our experience in dealing with uh, exports uh, gives us an idea in terms of what is happening in the rest of the world and we are also able to incorporate that in our products and then give that uh, benefit also to our customers. How you have been able to make your machine versatile to process any type of cotton, any type of uh, material, sir? I think as you know, uh, cotton from India uh, varies in their properties and uh, therefore it has given us a tremendous experience over the years uh, to look at uh, dealing with different types of raw material in India and also you know, from the 70s onwards uh, the different imports which have come in. Secondly, uh, man-made fibers, I think they also uh, come in in a big way and perhaps depending on the ultimate consumer's uh, preference. Uh, we would see a mix of either 60-40 or 50-50 in terms of natural versus man-made as you go along. Uh, again, uh, realizing that we cannot be stuck to only one material uh, uh, has made LMW and the engineers to understand to make the, the machines uh, kind of, uh, if I may say, versatile in their, uh, uh, in their application. So, Understanding the raw material, the application and then the desired output is, is the answer for us to have different raw materials running on our products. To support the customers to get into synthetics? Uh, I think LMW is absolutely there to support us, uh, support the entire uh, uh, growth uh, of uh, whatever the country needs for the next few years. And uh, again in terms of synthetics, uh, without getting into the specifics of the machine, uh, all our subsystems, our components, all of those uh, will help uh, our customers to produce the highest quality synthetic yarns. So, how do you think government uh, both, you know, uh, uh, can support textile industry? Any idea or strategies you would like to, uh, you know, suggest, sir? Uh, you know, state government as well as uh, central government. Uh, first of all, my total appreciation and thanks to both the central and state government. They have listened to all the requests of the textile industry. I understand sometimes it's very diverse and uh, sometimes it can also be complicated. But I think they have summarized uh, all the, the requests and have come up with several plans, as we said earlier, in terms of infrastructure, in terms of fiscal, in terms of uh, of all kinds of support to industry, including the textile engineering industry. So I think um, we need to wait and see how these plans roll out and how industry takes full advantage of them. So I think government has done its bit 
it's now for us industrialists to make use of these schemes and really put into uh, to action uh, what our plans are. What is your message to uh, your customers and the uh, industry, sir? Well, first of all, we thank our customers for their patronage and their tremendous support to also make us whom we are um, over several decades. I think uh, we share the same bond with them in terms of belonging to one large Indian community of textiles. Uh, looking ahead, I think uh, we will work much closer with them in order to strengthen their uh, arms. And uh, I feel that uh, we should also have a kind of a common agenda. I mean, there are uh, many agendas in textile, but I think it's important, especially under our dynamic uh, leadership right now, both in uh, the textile ministry and as also in the, in the, under the prime minister, I think we're able to bring them all together and that will have a, a multiplying effect in terms of uh, the benefits to all of us. So I think bringing and having a clear vision for India and India textile policy and also us being a uh, part of uh, the whole textile policy will benefit all of us. Uh, industry 4.0, how LMW is going to support what plans you have, sir? Yeah, uh, you see, uh, Industry 4.0 is not new to LMW because we are a very large machine tool maker. Uh, and if you look at the birth of the concept of 4.0 came from the mother machines, machine tools. So we are aware of this well ahead of many of uh, the other uh, producers since we are using that as a part of our daily business routine in the machine tool, machine manufacturing side. So today our machines are smart, they're equipped to be connected, they're equipped to give data and uh, we are completely compliant and absolutely uh, you know, in the zone as they say for uh, connectivity. Uh, further, we also uh, you know, offer a whole uh, range of automation which then will help them uh, to, to reduce the workloads and to make it more automated. Uh, sir, we know that LMW is a pioneer in championing social causes and societal uh, upliftment. Can you please elaborate a bit on such activities undertaken by you? Do you have a philosophy of philanthropy? Yeah. So I think, uh, uh, you know, to answer this, I must give uh, credit to a lot of Indian industry. Uh, I think, as you rightly said, in terms of need, industry has also uh, championed many causes and is able to lessen the burden on society and also for government in terms of coming up and doing their bit in terms of corona or floods or any kind of relief like that. Now, uh, talking about our company, I think first I would say that we have helped build a good ecosystem around us. Uh, in terms of providing jobs, employment to many companies uh, which are directly associated with LMW. So I think that has created a uh, medium and those people have even become large uh, entrepreneurs. Secondly, um, even before this word CSR was coined, many of us, uh, not only LMW, many of us in Indian industry were contributing back to society because as I say, it's a part of us, it's a part of who we are and to share and also to help uh, people uh, who, who are needy. Um, first was education uh, and also health, uh, you know, in terms of hospitals, in terms of schools and colleges. I think that's a direct uh, uh, benefit. Uh, the second thing is adoption of villages. I think uh, that's a good uh, scheme which LMW has, has uh, kind of adopted, uh, we've, we've learned from other pioneers in this area and we've adopted uh, looking at whole villages, villages and the point there is to be sustainable. I think any CSR today we look at has to be sustainable. It's not a free handout, nobody wants a free handout. They want some kind of an assistance or help or a leg up and then they should have the pride in, in, in going ahead and achieving it. So. Again, our commitment is to uh, the areas of health, education, and also adoption of villages, and uh, to teach them sustainability so they can uh, survive even without us. So what is your vision for LMW over the next decade or more, sir? Yeah. So 
as products are changing, customers are changing, uh, ultimately markets are changing, I'm happy that I'm in a country, India, which has a very bright future uh, for textiles. I think we should be looking at simply doubling our, our footprint, global footprint in, in the whole area of uh, textiles. And we will be there to support each one of our customers, both existing and future, uh, with products which uh, are relevant for that period uh, and which address the issues of that, that certain period. Excellent, sir. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, sir, for sparing your time to, uh, you know, to enrich us uh, on how LMW has been, how LMW would be. And uh, in fact, I would say LMW has been the backbone for the growth of the Indian textile industry. Because of spending only, we are able to you know, compete uh, globally, sir. And we look forward to have your uh, continued uh, support from your uh, group uh, for the uh, growth of the industry, sir. Because we have a uh, too ambitious uh, target for next uh, uh, five years. Uh, so we are sure uh, the industry will be uh, greatly benefited out of your service, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.